Well, Brian, we've just watched Leicester move up to second in the Premier League table, a 2-1 win over Aston Villa. Not the most convincing performance, but three points and three very valuable points. Yeah, three very important points for them. Aston Villa, no um, no easy challenge nowadays. Um, mixed form at home, I think, from Villa. But as we know, Leicester have had brilliant away form. Um, only the one defeat this year. But... Uh, they made hard work of it thought they haven't got off to such a good start and got two you know two goals up by the middle of the first half and looked like they might win the game rather easily conceded the goal in the second half early enough and uh we ended up hanging on a bit towards the end but given the circumstances where they have some some important players out injured and their squad is somewhat depleted I think it was a it was a, it was a good victory and then Madison going off in the second half of the match forced forced changes in the middle forced them into a more defensive change really but a, a very good win in in the overall context of the league on where Leicester themselves might finish this season eight goals now this season in the Premier League for James Madison nine for Harvey Barnes, two very young, talented players. Like Leicester are established now in the top six, but you mentioned during commentary, they are still a selling club. Then Chilwell went last summer to Chelsea. What are the limits for those two? How, how good do you think they can be? Um, oh, well, I think uh, Madison has, has, has proved himself in making the step up from Norwich. He was a championship player over the last two seasons. People will... will particularly the first year people wondered would he would he be able to make that step up and he's certainly done that and more and now he, he finds himself where he's in contention to get um, into the English squad let's say um, he's a very very good player and um, his, his his ability to score goals and make goals is 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 very noticeable, I suppose, is what you'd say. I mean, he's different from other players that Vardy has played with in the past, and a really good relationship. He said when he went there, he thought he would click with Vardy, and he he, he certainly done that. Um, his goal today was wasn't a brilliant goal. It was a good goal. Maybe the goalkeeper should have done done better. But typical of him to find that little bit of space outside the edge of the box and beyond the spot and to pick it up off Barnes and stick it in the net. Barnes, you know, he's another he's another lad. He's such a young player and he he's, he's, seems to find it no bother to to keep the fences under pressure. He's a great honesty about him too. His work rate, getting back up and back on the left hand side he can drift across the line and play on the right hand side I think too I, I, how far they can go whether Le- Leicester will always have them it's hard to know I think they're the sort of players that could end up being at Leicester for a few years with any of the of the of the, the, the clubs with bigger financial muscle and a higher profile than Leicester want to take them I think that remains to be seen I think you know I'm not sure they'd be Barnes might be a Liverpool type player he could be a Manchester United type player not sure Madison there's a space for him at either of those clubs as yet Chelsea have have already bought up a lot of those type of players they've a gang of them who want to play just behind the front man um, so you know maybe Leicester can hang on to them for a while and they can continue to flourish there they're now six points clear of Chelsea in fifth. Last season, they faded and couldn't quite get Champions League football. I think they finished that game with, say, two attacking players, nine defensive-minded players. Brendan Rodgers, as a manager, and how he's developed, is that a more pragmatic Brendan Rodgers that we're now seeing that will actually see Leicester see this through and finish in the top four? Um, there might be an element of that with him. Um, last season, they... Look, it was a very unusual season, and I'd be slow to be critical of Brendan, Brendan Roger or any manager dealing with the whole thing of the close down, not being able to train with the players, the players as a squad not training when stop the march, and then it restarts, and you don't know what condition the players are in, and the matches are packed in, there's no crowds, and so on and so forth. It didn't go well for them after they returned. Um, Leicester and they ended up I think it was as I said earlier I think they got four wins in the last 17 games which wasn't really top four form was their form up until then so I think you have to give some allowances for that 
fall off in the in um, in the form of the second half of the season. Maybe he, he he has been a little bit more pragmatic in that late on today. He understood that it didn't really matter whether it looked very well. He brought on Mendy, brought on Chaudhry, brought on Amarty, all defensive toy players, and he he's playing five four one. And Vardy's up there, and they hang on. Uh, by next week, no one will remember that they were hanging on a little in the last quarter of an hour of the game. People say, oh, another good victory away against Villa for Leicester. Their away form is, is exceptional. Nine wins, three draws, one defeat. I think I think it, it's sensible and pragmatic. And if Brendan, Brendan Rodgers has added that to his, his uh, tactical nuances, uh, that's fair enough too. I think, it, I think anything is acceptable for Leicester to do to try and make that top four. And if that means not having loads of attacking players on the pitch late in the game, away game, so be it. If Leicester have shown signs of this over the last couple of seasons, I don't think anyone was expecting West Ham to be in the mix for a top four spot. They're in the top four. They beat Tottenham today. It's a heck of a job David Moyes has done. And I heard you talking earlier on a personal level, a bit of redemption for him after some difficult years. Yeah, well, that might it might be just me, but I wouldn't say it's uh, uh, just me. I think lots of people around the, the, the say the coaching scene over the last number of years have liked David Moyes because he's been very generous with his time. Um, in in when he was out of clubs and when he was in clubs, he would he would go to coaching events put on by the various associations, and he would make. I mean, I mean, the two presentations I saw him doing at coaching events I was at were probably the two most impressive um, that I've ever seen. Maybe right. in the, in the in certainly in the top ten of of, of coaching presentation, just with their honesty and in in his his um, openness to give the information and to discuss things that happened to him in the past and discuss some of the mistakes he, he felt he might have made at Manchester United, the difficulty of managing in Spain. Um, and, you know, I, I just think he's an impressive bloke. I think it, it's it's not gone well for him in recent jobs. He was probably, it was the wrong job at the wrong time, the, the right job at the wrong time in Manchester United following on from Alex Ferguson. But it, I, I, I'm, I'm pleased for him now that it's going so well for him. West Ham is a difficult club to manage. Um, it's a difficult difficult ownership who seem to want to have plenty of involvement and plenty of say and how things are run. A lot of seem to have signed a lot of bogey players over the years. The recruitment hasn't been very good. But David Moyes, he was in for a short time, then he's out, then he's back. They've spent a lot of money in between. It didn't seem like it was money well well used. And now he's in there and he's having an impact and the the players that are, have been chosen, the recruitment has been better and the return from those players. I mean, the two players from from um, Czech Republic, mm. uh, Suchek and Kufal, have been really good signings. And that's good judgment to know that they were going to be able to jump from the level they were playing at and Slavia Prague in the Czech League to play in the Premier League. But others have been have been very good. Bowen's been very good signing for them as well. He's done very well on the right hand side. And all round, they're a more solid team, more effective team. There's uh, no shirking of work. Everyone has to do their shift. He doesn't. He doesn't suffer fools gladly in terms of players not putting it in, and they're getting the return. I think they've been helped by the inconsistency of other teams also. But they're doing their stuff, and a really good win for them today, beating Spurs. Yeah, one of those teams with inconsistency is obviously Liverpool. In fact, it's not even inconsistency at this stage. It's been the most remarkable collapse in form. When you think heading into 2021, they were top of the table. You expected it might be a tight title race, but they would be there to the very end. Having gone 68 games unbeaten at Anfield, they've now lost four in a row, beaten at home in a Merseyside derby for the first time in living memory. What the hell is happening? Well, I think it's obvious what's happening. Every, everyone has had their chance to speak about it. Uh, the number of injuries, centre-backs, extraordinary number of centre-backs that they've had to use because of the injuries to, to Van Dijk, Matip, Gomez, Fabinho as the, the filler in our centre-half. He's had trouble. Henderson now is injured, putting in some young players instead of them. Have been good enough. Made a couple of signings in the, um, I'd say, the... You know, not in 
top rank signings by any means going going in a, in a cheaper part of the marketplace to get two players not proven Davies hasn't got a go yet I think he's probably picked up an injury but the young talker centre half he's been thrown into it and a lot of responsibility put on him and he hasn't been up to he did alright against RB Leipzig during the week but I think that's been the main problem the disruption with the midfield by having to put uh, Fabino and Henderson back into the back forward that hasn't helped Kate is out injured as well uh, jo- so they give him a Jota. free pass then because of the no injuries? I'm not giving the manager a free pass I'm just saying that they. I think you have to look at the circumstances I'm not giving the manager I wouldn't I'd, I'd give the manager a relatively free pass not wouldn't give the club a free pass because I think they've been a bit cautious in in um, in their approach and not supporting the manager and not ensuring that they had the depth of squad that was going to be able to cater for this um, well it's been a disaster for them in, in terms of um, in, in terms of injuries then the front three haven't been in tune this year at all I think that's been a that's probably a result of the intensity of the last few seasons of only using the same three all the time. Origi rarely used. Shakiri getting more football now than he has in the last couple of seasons. But the front three haven't been able to sustain the levels. That's no surprise. I think it's in the history of football that's been the way. So there's been lots of reasons for it, but it's still been an extraordinary collapse from the levels they were at. It really is hard to believe. Do you think they'll turn it around? No, I don't think they'll turn it around in terms of uh, being the top of the league. Um, I think they're going to. They might be in the scramble for fourth place. That's about the best they can get to. I think at this stage, I think it's it, it's hard to see them going on the run. I know everyone has said, well, they have the ability to go on the run and win ten games in a row or something. I don't see that at the moment. I see it's it's the the centre back thing is still going to be a problem till the end of the season until some of those players get fit again. Um, and the reliance on those front three, if you, 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 Jota doesn't come back, will continue to cause them a problem. So I think their concentration may now become on the Champions League. And that may be the way, I mean, that's the only competition really that, that they can win now. So I think that's the road they'll be going. Great stuff as always, Brian. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks.